So today we're going to learn about the reflection of waves and just ray optics in general. This is going to be a real quick unit where we look at how images are created using lenses and mirrors and other optical means. So I want to start out by having you realize that we are not going to be focusing on the wave nature of light. Instead, we're going to treat light as if it travels in straight lines. Just like when you were younger and you draw rays of light coming out of the sun, treat light almost like beams of lasers, okay? Treat it by drawing a straight line until the light interacts with some other material. The first thing we want to learn is something that historically is kind of neat, but not so important anymore, and that is called a pinhole camera. So a pinhole camera is a light tight box, meaning no light can get into this box, except for a single pinhole that is poked in the front wall of the box. And this is an image that we could see when we look into our pinhole camera, and you could see it is a tree that happens to be upside down. And one of the characteristics of the images that are formed by a pinhole camera is that they are inverted or they are upside down. So let's see how the pinhole camera works. And again, it's not that the pinhole camera is important, but it's a good introduction to how we're going to attack optics. Okay, so we have a snowman standing in front of a pinhole camera. You should know that light comes off of the snowman and heads in all different directions one of those directions will actually travel right through the pinhole and strike the back of the camera. Obviously, this should be a perfectly straight line, but I am not confident enough to draw a straight line. The same is true for all other parts of the snowman. So coming off the bottom, we got lots of rays of light heading in all different directions. We want the one ray of light that passes through the pinhole and then strikes the back wall of the camera. Okay, I hope you see that the light coming from his hat hits here. So the top of his hat would be right there. The bottom of the snowman would be right there. And as you can see, this pinhole camera forms an inverted image. When we measure things, for this scenario, oftentimes we care about the size of the image. So HI is going to stand for the height of the image. We're going to compare it to the height of the object, the original snowman. And we're going to see that it depends upon how big the cavity is in the pinhole camera, that is the distance from the pinhole to where the image is going to form and also how far the object is away from the pinhole. Our formula is going to turn out to be height of the image divided by height of the object is the same ratio as the distance to the image is to the distance of the object. Hi over ho equals die over do. We're going to throw a negative in front of this to make the height of the image come up negative because that image is going to be inverted or upside down. Later in this unit, we're going to get positive HIs and that will mean that the image is standing upright. This image is called inverted. This image is also known as a real image. It's real because the rays of light actually strike the back of that box and form an actual image. This is not some sort of hallucination in our brain, but an actual real image that could be formed on paper, on film, or on some kind of sensors that are sensitive to light energy. Okay, so again, thousands of rays of light are leaving his hat. Only one of them goes through the pinhole. Same is true of the bottom. And where they hit the box is where we're going to find the image of the snowman. Okay, the next thing I'd like you to know about is a thing called a half-silvered mirror. And this half-silvered mirror is both mirror and glass. So you can see a reflection of Wally Gator, but you can also see through this. So if it's perfectly half-silvered, 
half of the light that hits it will reflect and half of the light that hits it will pass straight on through. So we can use these like in a police interrogation room to separate out the two different rooms. The half silver mirror is right there. And what's going to happen is the light coming from the guy, if we said it had a strength of 500, half of it would make it through. Half of it would reflect back. Okay, and then when we look at the other guy, half of his light will go through, and half of his light will bounce back. When we look at what each person sees, we see that the person in this darker room is going to see this signal a hundred times stronger than their own reflection. They will not even notice their own reflection. They will be seeing this guy. So this person will think he is looking at a window. This person is going to see the 250 of his own image drowned out to 2.5 of the other guy, and he's going to think that he is looking at a mirror. Notice there is nothing special about one side of the glass versus the other. The only thing special is the way that the lighting was set up. The brighter room sees it as a mirror. The darker room sees it as a window. Okay, so in a um, police interrogation room, the interrogation would be happening in a bright room, and the people watching the interrogation would be in a much darker room. They would see it as a window. These people would see it as a mirror. Okay, so oftentimes these are referred to as two-way mirrors. We can see an example of a two-way mirror. This one's not half silver, it's just a regular piece of glass. But by having an extreme change in lighting, we can see the effect as one twin turns into another. So we're seeing the window when the room is lit. And when the room is dark, we're able to see the reflection. Okay, with regular mirrors, just remember when the light hits the mirror, it's going to bounce off. And if the light is hitting at a 90 degree angle to the actual surface of the mirror, it's going to bounce straight back again. When we take the boards and we tilt them so the light is no longer hitting perpendicularly, you can see that the hockey puck is going to change direction. You can see that we tilted the board by about six degrees, and you can see that the hockey puck changes direction by about 12 degrees. This rule is always going to stay true. If we tilt by six, the deflection is 12. If we tilt by 10, the deflection is 20. It's going to deflect by twice as much as the tilt. Okay, so if we shoot these again, this time we make a more extreme angle, we can see that the deflection becomes more extreme. This time we have deflected by about 27 degrees. And we can see that the hockey puck deflected by about 54 degrees. Okay, once again, double. Okay, how do we actually deal with this? Well, just like we did a while ago when we were talking about area vectors, what we do is we define the mirror or the boards by a perpendicular line. That perpendicular line is called the normal line. The normal line always forms a right angle with your mirror. Okay, and you can see that this angle here is equal to this angle here. So we got about 16 degrees on both sides of the normal. And that's why this angle is twice as big as the tilt of the boards. All right, it's called the normal line. So when you have reflection, you're going to draw a normal line, you're going to measure your angle, whatever that angle is, is going to be the same as the angle of reflection. Angle of incident equals angle of reflection. That is how mirrors are going to behave.
In the next lesson, we're going to look at the actual formation of images coming off of mirrors. Both plain mirrors, that is flat mirrors, and also curved mirrors.